turning our mourning into dancing, our sorrow into joy. That's going to be our theme today in our Aliyah discussion. As we're going to take a minute to discuss a holiday, if you will, kind of a a minor holiday, a, a more of a, a day of celebration, I guess you could say, that most people are not aware of, and that is the the celebration of Tuba'av, the fifteenth of Tuba'av, and this is in stark contrast to Tisha B'av. You have Tisha B'av, which is the ninth of Av, and then you have Tuba'av, which is the fifteenth of Av. One is a day of of historic tragedy for the Jewish people. Uh, which is the culmination of three weeks of mourning. That's the Tisha. That's Tisha B'av, That's the ninth of Av. We've been we've been in a state of mourning now for three weeks, and we've expressed that mourning in a number of different ways. And some of that includes uh, not cutting our hair, not trimming our nails, not um, wearing freshly laundered clothes during the nine days. During the nine days, we don't eat meat or drink wine. During the three weeks. We uh, do the entire three weeks. We don't listen to music of any kind. Um, we we have a tampered down joy. It, it, it's it's it becomes palatable and, and apparent. All culminating in Tisha B'av, which Tisha B'av, uh, which is again the ninth of Av, which actually is tomorrow. But we never we never mourn or fast on a Shabbat unless it's Yom Kippur which is the only exception. And so we we culminated that because both temples were destroyed on Tisha B'Av and the sin of the spies occurred on Tisha B'Av and, uh, you know, the, the a bunch of other tragedies in history uh, occurred on Tisha B'Av. I have uh, on this channel, I actually have a video about the three weeks and about Tisha B'Av itself. If you haven't seen those uh, videos, uh, one again deals with just the three weeks of mourning and the other one deals specifically with Tisha B'Av. And so the month of Av itself is 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 a very, uh, a, a hard month. However, God being God doesn't leave us uh, in that state for very long. And he also gives us the opportunity to transform sorrow into gladness. And this is really the MO of Hashem. The modus operandi, as we say, of Hashem is taking our opportunities of sadness and transforming them into sorrow. And way, the way that we do that is through teshuva. Now, as, as human beings, our problem is a lot of times we... We just we we try to waller in the sadness. We don't allow ourselves to get up and get over it. We need to learn, by the way, and I, this is just a, a, a shout out to all of us. We need to learn how to get up and get over it. Don't be stuck in the past. <clears throat> and remember, by the way, you are in control. You are in control of your emotions. No one can make you feel any particular way. You are you are in control. Don't allow yourself to be victimized or uh, by yourself or by others. Uh because people say, well, you know, I, I I I this makes me think of that or you make me think of this or blah 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 blah. No, you're in control of your emotions and so we need to be in control of how we feel and what we do and a lot of times God is ready for us to get up and get moving and get over it and get on with your life. But we just want to, we just somehow we enjoy sitting around and sulking and feeling sorry for ourselves and yada, yada, yada. And God's like, I don't, what are you talking about? You asked me to forgive you. I did. I, I forgot about, I'm not, even, I'm not even sure what you did. Can we just move on with life now? Can we just get on down the road? And we've, you and I've got to learn how, how to do that. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy. When it comes to getting over it, well, Tuba Av is about that. Tuba Av is about moving on. It's about moving on in joy. And of course, you know, everything is in balance. We don't forget the lessons of the past. We don't pretend like nothing ever happened because that can get us in trouble as well. You know, somebody we were having a uh, doing some work on the on the synagogue last night, and uh, three men getting together and, and doing work on on an air conditioning system, and naturally, uh, uh, you know discussions of world war ii museums came up 
of course that's that's just that's part it goes part and parcel with everything that's happening you know but the discussion came up of of why those museums are so important and that's it's so that we we have to sometimes walk through the museum of our life not to get depressed but rather so that we can make sure that we don't repeat past mistakes okay all right so that's your pep talk your pep talk this morning is get up and get over it and stop allowing yourself or other people to keep you to keep you chained in negative emotions um you're bigger than that. You're better than that. Uh, be a big, be a big girl. Be a big boy. Uh, you know, it's time to move on. You can't do anything. You can't fix it anyway. You can't. You can't go back and do anything about it. Uh, the only thing you can do is 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 work on the now. And and, by, and as I said many times, um, the now is the only reality you have. Your yesterday is not a reality. Your tomorrow is not a reality. Your today is the only reality you have. So don't squander it by letting your past suck you into a black hole or letting your future worry you or, or get you distracted. Okay. So this is what Tuba Ava is all about. Tuba Ava is, is about Hashem's forgiveness. Now, the sages write about Tuba Av, okay, the, which is the 15th of the month of Av. That's what Tuba Av means, the 15th of the month of Av. And it's a day of joy. And what I find fascinating is the holidays that people, and, and now let me, let me say this right quick. Cause I say a holiday Tuba Av is not a, a Yom Tov as, as Rosh Hashanah is a Yom Tov or Shav, Shavuot is a Yom Tov or, um, you know, Yom Kippur is a Yom Tov. It's, it's not on the same level. Okay. Uh, it's a what you might call, like I said earlier, a minor holiday or a celebration. So it doesn't have the biblical. Uh, I mean, it is biblical, but it doesn't have the Torah weight of these other days. OK, doesn't mean that's invalid. See, a lot of Gentiles think that just because a holiday is not explicitly mentioned in the Torah, that it's wrong for us to do it. We shouldn't be doing any holidays that aren't explicitly mentioned in, in the Bible. Well, that's silly and frankly, just ridiculous. Now we can make, that's also, by the way, immature because it suggests that one is not capable of making a distinction. In other words, this is a Yom Tov that God ordained. It's a holy Sabbath. And this is a celebration that celebrates an event. So it's really immature. And, and, and basically it's all, and I can add to that, that it's also that Gentile mindset is very legalistic. It's a spirit of religion. And basically it's just dumb. And so God has these holidays that we can celebrate. Um, yes, they're not yum tubs. They're not, you know, whatever, but it, but it is important. What I find interesting though, is that a lot of times these little celebrations like Tuba Av have immense meaning and people don't even know about them. And yet they're so powerful in, in what they mean. Now I actually have, I think that I also have a video dedicated to Tuba Av on this channel. I believe I do. Um, and you can look that up as well. Uh, but we're going to talk about it here now. Um, so people don't know about this and that therefore they miss important things. And it's almost as, as if Hashem hides these very precious diamonds in places where people are least likely to look. And I think that just goes back to the proverb that it says, it's the glory of God to conceal the matter and it's the glory of Kings to discover it. And a lot of times our immaturity, our silliness, our religiosity, our religious spirits, and frankly, our just abject ignorance prevents us from diving any deeper beyond the surface level. And so I want to encourage you to take a deep dive with me. And let's look at Tuba Av. You're probably the one percenters. I mean this. You're probably the one percent of the human population, if that, that no know, even knows what that means now. OK, so the Mishnah tells us that no days were as festive for Israel as the 15th of Av and Yom Kippur. This is comes from the Talmud and Tanait. Dun, dun, dun. Wait, what? Let me ask you a question. 
My favorite holiday on the Jewish calendar for a, a number of, of, of really important reasons, some of which are deeply personal. My favorite holiday is Yom Kippur. I look forward every year, and I mean this with sincerity. I look every year, forward every year to Yom Kippur. Now, how many of you would think to yourself that Yom Kippur is a day of great joy? How many? Now, some of you have, who are watching have never celebrated Yom Kippur. I say celebrate on purpose. And so you don't really know. Maybe you're not really sure about Yom Kippur. You, and, and maybe you come from Christian backgrounds and you've heard all of this nonsense about, about it. But let, let me just explain. Yom Kippur is a day of a, first of all, it's, it's a 20, basically a 25 hour total fast. No food, no water. Unless, of course, now there's all these kind of ex stipulations. If you're somebody who has a medical issue and you need to eat a little something, we always tell you, the sages will tell you, the rabbis will tell you, eat something. Now you have low blood sugar or you're, or you're a diabetic or, you know, some, whatever, whatever the case is. So, but at the same time, so, you know, you have, let's say you have a little hypoglycemia. So if you don't have food, you could really get into a bad way. Okay. That's understandable, of course, you know? So what do you do? Well, you don't have a steak dinner, but you might have a little yogurt like during Yom Kippur or just a little, just a little something to keep you from crashing. Right. Okay. So, so, but for everybody else who is, uh, doesn't have those times of issues <clears throat> and you're over the age of bar and bar mitzvah, then you fast and there is no music at all on Yom Kippur. We, the services are generally, they're more somber. It's filled with, with prayers of repentance and confessions and, Men don't sleep with their wives on Yom Kippur. You know, generally we sleep on the couch or or sleep in another room or, you know, because marital relationships are forbidden. We, we, we wear, we don't wear leather shoes. You know, we, uh, you know, there's all these different things that we do that, that basically we're like kind of sitting around, if you will, in sackcloth and ashes. And yet... From the Jewish point of view, now from the Gentile, I can understand. From the non-Jewish point of view, that's like a big Debbie Downer. Wow, Yom Kippur. Ugh, 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 I can't eat. I can't. Oh, there's no music. Oh, it's going to be 25 hours of just fasting and praying and seeking God. From the Jewish point of view, it's it's a day of immense joy. It's a huge amount of joy. Primarily because... How many of you know, okay, if you've really been out in the yard, let's say you've been out in the yard or whatever, wherever, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. But let's say you've been out in the yard and you're just hot and you're sweaty and you're covered in grime and muckety muck and you've been working and doing whatever you're doing, yard work, whatever it is, it's hot. How many of you know how good it feels to go in and take a nice warm shower and wash your hair and wash your body and just you know how and when you get out of the shower how good you feel how refreshed you feel to get all that grime and all that muck off you that's that's Yom Kippur Yom Kippur is the opportunity to go into the God's spiritual shower go into his spiritual bath and just wash all that stuff off and you come out you know, pure and clean. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful experience. And so this is why from the Jewish point of view, it is a day of great joy. And why it's the holiest of all holidays. It's the only holiday. Think about this. It's the only holiday that when we come to the end of it, we're like the angels. So Yom Kippur specifically celebrates the forgiveness that we received uh, from the sin of the golden calf. That's specifically what it celebrates. And 
most importantly, this is another point about Yom Kippur. And, and the reason I'm talking about Yom Kippur is because it's related in joy, as we read from the Mishnah, it's related in joy to Tubav. So the other thing that Yom Kippur celebrates is the renewal of the covenant. So this is, this is, by the way, okay, so a lot of Christians would ask, and it's a good question, they would ask, why would a Christian need to celebrate, a, a, a Christian, I'm, this is what, how they ask it, okay, why would a Christian need to celebrate uh, Yom Kippur? Well, you know, one of the answers to that would be a Christian doesn't because a Christianity is a made up religion and it has nothing to do with the Bible, actually. Uh, so you don't need to celebrate. You just need to do whatever, you know, just like anybody, anybody else in their made up religion. You just do whatever you want to do. That's kind of a tongue in cheek answer, but it's true. Uh, but why? Let's let's ask it a different way. Why would a believer in Messiah Yeshua need or want to celebrate Yom Kippur? Because isn't. Messiah Yeshua, the mediator of a, a new covenant, which actually means a renewed covenant. That's not brand new. We've gone over this and over this and over this. We don't want there to be a new covenant. We do you and listen. Let me let me just say it for you, shall I? You don't want a new covenant. No, you don't. I no, stop. So stop, stop talking. Stop. You think you do, but you don't. And here's why you don't. Because if your God has to give you a new covenant because the other one was messed up or somehow flawed, that means your God is flawed, God forbid, or that he messed up, Hasidus Shalom, or that somehow he made a mistake. That's not good. So you don't want that because our God is perfect and he doesn't make a mistake. When he gave us the rules the first time, it wasn't his fault. It was our fault that it didn't work out. So you don't want a new covenant. You want a renewed covenant. Yes, you do. And that's what the word Brit Hadasha actually means. It doesn't mean brand new. Okay. Now, if God, if Yeshua is the mediator of a renewed covenant, why do we need Yom Kippur? Well, Yom Kippur is actually the celebration of renewed covenant yes 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 so it was on yom kippur that the brand new tablets that moshe got were delivered to israel that's that's when amazon brought those tablets and delivered them to our house it was on yom kippur and so it's a celebration what else do we celebrate you know what's interesting on yom kippur on Yom Kippur, well, from Rosh Hashanah to Yom Kippur, it's really, it begins in Rosh Hashanah and culminates in Yom Kippur, but we're talking over and over and over again during that time period um, about the son, Isaac, that was offered on the altar by his father, Abraham. So during this entire time, we're asking Hashem to remember that offering. So yes, so Yom, Yom Kippur is all about that. Now, that's what it celebrates. What about Tuba Av? Tuba Av celebrates <clears throat> the forgiveness and atonement that we received uh, because of, uh, or, or th that we needed as a result of the sin of the spies. So that's what tu Tuba Av is all about rectifying. The sin of the spies issue. For 40 years, actually 38 years, but anyway, for four to round it up to 40 years, no person 20 years or older would be a, was allowed to enter the, the, uh, the Holy Land. On every year from the from the moment of the uh, the year of the sin of the spies, which, by the way, that night, the night that we cried our little eyes out and we just said, God hates us. He brought us here to die. By the way, this is another life lesson. What? You know, I felt there's such energy in this message. I don't, I guess uh, this is just a shim, I suppose. Um, but listen, I always tell us 
I always try to encourage this. And I encourage myself too, by the way, because contrary to popular belief, I am carbon based. I am a human. And I have the same human uh, uh, frailties and challenges that you do as well. Um, there's a particular psychiatrist that I enjoy watching on YouTube. She's got a lot that she talks about dealing with uh, different uh, people and stuff. Uh, anyway, I like to watch her stuff. It's very interesting. What I appreciate about appreciate about her is she gives a psychological advice, and then sometimes she'll say, hey, by the way, I'm working on that too. <laughs> That's great, right? It's, I really enjoy that uh, aspect. But anyway, so um, listen, we we – we fall into this challenge of sometimes we get into a bad situation or a bad, uh, what am I trying to say? A, a, a trial of life. And we want to say, God, why do you hate me? Why, why do you, do you make me go through these? It's just because you don't like me. Right. And I want to encourage all of us to really, 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 dot, 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 all caps, bold, underline, italic, really refrain from doing that because that was el problemo with the spy issue. Because when the spies came back and they had their own agenda, and we, we talked about their agenda, right? They had their own agenda and they manipulated everybody by lying to them frankly. They told the truth, but they didn't tell the whole truth. And so they lied to them essentially because a half truth is still a lie. And everybody got in their tents and started crying and wailing and gnashing their teeth and saying, God hates us. That's why he brought us here. And that made God mad. And it caused uh, the, it caused the following issue, which was on now, what then, by the way, that happened on the ninth of the, or excuse me, on the, yeah, I'm sorry, on the ninth of Av, the Tishabab. That occurred on this. That's one of the tragedies of Tishabab. And so, so you and I, when, when we're faced with challenges and issues, um, don't do that. Don't sit and sulk and say, God hates me. That's why he's caused this to go on in my life. He doesn't like me. He's always uh, He always seems to be taking me through these hard things. And remember what I've told you before, just as a reminder, it's the wisdom of my father that I'm passing on to you. Whatever you're going through, and, I, and, and some people go through some hard things. Trust me, I don't want to minimize your issue or your tragedy because it's it's not whatever you're going through or have been through. I don't want to minimize it, but I do want to encourage you only by saying somebody's been through worse and going through worse. Now, again, I'm not trying to belittle, but I have to remind myself of that because sometimes I walk through some things and I'm like, why? Oh man, this is really hard. And I have to remind myself, well, you know, I'm not in a concentration camp. I'm not being tortured. I'm not being buried alive. I mean, you know, people have been through some worse things. So I'm just telling you, you know, just encourage it. So on the sin of the spies, what would happen is on every Tisha B'Av for 40 years, on every Tisha B'Av for 40 years, everyone who had reached the age of 60 years old in the wilderness died 15,000 people estimated every Tisha B'Av what would happen is on every Tisha B'Av everybody would everybody who was 60 years and older or, or, or excuse me who had reached 60 years old would go out into the desert and dig their graves. I want you to just I want you to just put this in your head if you will because again, oh my goodness, we 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 read stories in the Tanakh and we read them and we don't really think about them sometimes. At least I don't. Maybe you do. But me, sometimes I'll read a story and I just kind of read through it, but then I like to go back and kind of really think about it. I want you to think about this. 
you're in the wilderness. You were involved in this t- the sin of the spies. You you told God he hated you, which is why he caused you to walk through this issue. And that didn't work out so well. So now you're 60 years old and you've got to go out into the wilderness because, you know, it's your year. And you've got to dig your own grave. And this is why the psalmist writes that the wicked who who deceive with their tongue and and what have you will will fall into their own pit that they dug. How do they dig it with their tongue? You say, well, somebody somebody lied on me and they spoke Lashon Haran. I'm I'm in the situation that I'm in because they lied. Don't worry. I mean, God's going to help you as long as you stick close to Him. All who trust in the Lord will not be put to shame. And those liars, they will be digging their own graves unless they make the shuva. Now, so you go out there and you have to dig your own grave and then you lie down in it. They went night night on Tish B'Av by laying down in their grave. And when the next morning they were dead and everybody, all the other people had to come and, you know, fill in the graves that went on for 40 years. But on Tuba of, of the last year, the people who were 60 years old went out and dug their graves and laid down in them. But the next morning, they were still alive. And they, they thought to themselves, well, maybe we messed up. Maybe somehow we got our days off. So they laid down in those graves for the next seven days. Think about that. I want you to think about it. They laid down in those graves. They went night, night in those graves for seven days. And on Tuba Av, the 15th of Av, they woke up and they realized the plague had stopped. So there were six events that happened on this tuba of that are worthy of, of, of mention and reason why the joy. Number one, the plague stopped. We just mentioned that. Number The second and third thing is that following the case of the daughters of Zephahad in Numbers chapter 36, daughters who inherited from their father when they were when their sons were forbidden to marry, uh, when, when, when there was no sons, so generations later, the the in Judges 19 through 21, the children of, of Israel would, would enter into a civil war, and that they would the daughters of as a result, the tribe of Benjamin would be basically banned. That prohibition was eventually lifted on Tubav. Um, the fourth event was after Jeroboam had split off the kingdom of Israel with ten tribes from the kingdom of Judah, he posted guards along the roads leading to Jerusalem. To prevent the people from going up to the holy city, he basically forced them to to celebrate their, his pagan festivals, kind of like the the Roman Church did that to to Christians. So <clears throat> it says that um, the last king of Israel, Hosea ben Ela, wished to 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 stop that, and so he removed those guards on Tubav. The fifth thing that happened was it, in, the, in the beginning of the second temple period, the land of Israel was was pretty much an, a wasteland, and the people were, were began to gather wood to make the the offerings, and this happened um, also on Tuba Av. The sixth event was the Romans, after the battle of Behar, or Betar, excuse me. Behar, Behar is in San Antonio. Uh, San Antonio de Behar, Behar. No, not not the Alamo, but <laughs> at Betar, uh, the, during the Bar Kokhba revolt, the Romans on Tuba Av finally allowed the Jewish dead to be buried, which was a disgrace that they were laid on the battlefield and not allowed to be buried. But but, uh, and a miracle took place when they went out to bury those bodies. They had not um, they had not suffered any type of of decay. God allowed. The bodies to miraculously to be to to remain. This happened during uh, during the second uh, temple period, after the the great revolt. Uh, 
And so Tuba Av, these, these events happen on Tuba Av. I also want to mention something else that on my on the the um, uh, thumbnail that I created for this video, I, I chose a picture of a woman in white dancing in a field, and th that was purposeful. There's a lot I can say about Tuba Av. Uh, again, I, I I do believe I if I have a video about this, and I'll actually uh, find that video and put it in the description of this uh, this video for you. But the reason I have the woman dressed in white dancing in the field is because that would happen on Tubov. And it says in Tani 26b, Rab Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel said, Israel had no days as festive as the 15th of Av and Yom Kippur when the maidens of Jerusalem would go out dressed in white garments and dance in the vineyards. And what would they say? Young man, raise your eyes and see what you choose for yourself. So... What this is saying is that on, on on these days, these women would be, of course, they're maidens. They're, they're you know, uh, not married or what have you. They would go out and the men they, who obviously were younger men looking for wives would select their wives from that event. And so it's a day of great joy. It's matchmaking. The Talmud uh, Sanhedrin 22a says, 40 days before the formation of an embryo, a heavenly voice proclaims, the daughter of this one is meant to be married to this one. Being that the world was created on the 25th day of Elul, 40 days before creation was the 15th day of Av. Do you see the correlation there? Accordingly, if there is any day that, that is befitting for the marriage of a daughter of this one to the son of that one, it would be the day of Tubab. This is why Tubab in Judaism has become kind of a, a day of love. It's it's a it's a day for couples to go out on a date and um you know have you say, well, is it like a Jewish Valentine's Day? Well, I guess kind of, only without the pagan overtones and undertones. Um, it's, it's a day that celebrates renewal. It's a day that celebrates forgiveness. It's a day that celebrates resurrection to new life. We came out of the graves and entered into the promise. It's a day of restrictions being, being lifted restrictions that came because of our sin, not because of God's law. Did you hear what I just said there? The restrictions came not because of, of God's law, but because of our sin. See, God's law doesn't burden us, but our sin does. God's law does not bring death, but our sin does. God's law does not constrict but our sin does. Some people think, because they've read Paul's letters, they think that the Torah is the law of sin and death. Are you kidding me right now? That is so blasphemous. Please don't ever say that. That is like blasphemy 101. The law of Moses is the word of God. And the word of God is not sin and death. Okay? What sin and death is the law of our carnal nature. That's sin and death. But God's word is life. Now, it goes on to say in this uh, comment here. Furthermore, just as one mourns the death of a relative for six days and then gets up on the seventh day to begin to rebuild their life, similarly, Jews as a whole sit Shiva for the destruction of their beloved temple on the ninth of Av and then commence the rebuilding process on the morning of the seventh day, which is the 15th of Av. After the ninth of Av, we strive once again to place the divine presence within our camp. But how does one restore God's presence? Well, the Talmud and Sota 17a teaches us that if a man and wife merit living together righteously, the divine presence rests between them. Hence, the matchmaking ceremonies were reserved for this period. Another reason why the women went out and danced, so to speak, and there was a there was a matchmaking ceremony. It's because of all of I, what I just said. You no, know, incidentally, 
you know, husband and wife living in harmony, pardon me, is a part an important thing. And the sages also write concerning the wife that the wife, so the man, historically, the man goes out and kind of works. He's the primary, you know, breadwinner. He's the primary breadwinner. And yet the sages say that even if the woman is a kind of work, you know, stay in the house and work, which, by the way, is a lot of work. OK, modern feminism, which is a lie tells a woman that if you're if you're just a stay-at-home wife or whatever then you're you're not really doing anything you need to go out in the, in the work in the industry and work well i mean you can if you want to but don't think for just one minute that being at home and taking care of the house and maybe the kids and the dogs and the cats and the squirrels isn't a lot of work it's a lot of work but you know that already but the sages say even if she's at home and doesn't go out and work or whatever, that she, her Kedusha, is the source of prosperity for the home. So, ladies, it's your fault. No, I'm kidding. I didn't mean that. What I, what I, what I really wanted to say was that even, even though the man's out there working, his success, his prosperity depends on the Kedusha of the wife. And see, that's how Hashem intricately weaves those two concepts together so on the one hand the man is working and he says well i'm working i'm a hard worker i'm really successful i'm getting paid a lot of money and i'm really having a great time and this is really great and the wife and, and other religions the wife is just supposed to sit there and go i'm uh, okay it's all you know i'm just i'm just you know, whatever. But in Judaism, the, the, the Judaism says to the man, yes, you are successful. Yes, you are good. Yes, you are rising in the ranks. And the reason you are is because your wife is keeping a kosher kitchen. Your wife is lighting the candles. Your wife is making challah. Your wife is going to the mikvah. Your wife is studying Torah. Your wife is praying. And because she is being a godly Jewish woman, she is bringing down the kedusha into the home, which is making you a success. And so that is the mindset of Judaism. Now, finally, there's a whole lot more I wanted to say, but, you know, we're always out of time, but never out of content. But let me conclude by saying this. What else is special about Tuba'av? Well, Tuba'av is the beginning of our preparation for the month of Elul. And this is what else is so exciting. At Tuba'av, we begin to really prepare spiritually for the month of Elul. And the month of Elul begins the 40-day time of in really intense teshuva, which culminates with Yom Kippur. And so it's a it's it's a an wonderful opportunity to begin to really spiritually awaken. So think about. Think about it like this. Tisha B'Av is our time of just kind of, it's that seed planted in the ground. Tuba B'Av is where that, that stalk begins to sprout from the earth and begin to grow. And then Elul is where we begin to really flower. And Yom Kippur is where the harvest comes. End of our Aliyah today. Thank you so much for being here. It's a blessing to be with you. Please like this video. Subscribe to our channel if you have not done that. Ring the bell so make sure that you stay up to date on everything that we're sharing here. And uh, we will look forward to being with you tomorrow, God willing, in our uh, services. So God bless you. Thank you so much. Be sure. Hey, what did you learn today? Let me know in the comments what you your big takeaway is. That would be fantastic. Until we meet again, have a blessed day. Shabbat Shalom. Have a wonderful era of tonight. We'll look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow.